Hey, Jeff, how are you today? Hey there, good. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, TGIF. That's right. All right, so we're hearing a lot of buzz about the interest rates going up, and then I think- really? Huh. <laughs> Breaking news. Um, I must have gotten a half a dozen emails about these buy downs. So can you explain what a buy down is and how that would benefit somebody that was going to purchase, I guess, before the rates went up? And then they looked at their payments, I guess, now with the new rates and they're like, oh, that's yeah. not good. Huge difference. And I've run into what people I call, you know, pre-qualified three, four or five months ago. They come back and I still pre-qualified. No, cut it in half. And that's about what you're, you know, going to be qualified for now. So there's two different types of buy downs and I'll keep it as layman as possible. <clears throat> the only ones you've heard about, like say the last 10 years is the standard, the rate is whatever, 4%. How, how much will it cost me to buy it down to three and a half? So you pay these discount points, it'll buy the rate down to, in this example, three and a half percent. And that's your rate for the rest of the term of the loan till you refinance yourself. What's becoming really a big thing now, and there's a lot of positives about, is the temporary buy down. Okay. So the temporary buy down, it works the same way. You're buying the rate down. It's got to come from the seller builder, whoever, it's got to be from the selling side. So the buyer borrower is not paying these discount points. Okay. So that's, that's the first difference. <clears throat> the other difference is you're doing it for a two or three year. Um, okay. Personally, I'd recommend the two years. There's a couple of reasons. One, because I do think rates are coming down in the not too distant future. Um, so what you're doing, let's call it a two, one buy down. So let's say today's rate is 7%. And the way the market's done the last two days, it's probably higher than that now, but let's just use seven as a good round number. Um, today's rate is 7%. You do a 2-1 buy down. So the seller is prepaying the interest. For the first year, it'd be 2% lower. So you, the borrower is paying a 5% interest rate payment for the first year of the loan. Okay. Second year, it's... 1% interest. That's why it's called 2 1. It's 2% the first year, 1% the second year. So the seller has prepaid interest for 1% rate on the second year. So now the borrower is paying a rate, a payment based on a 6% rate instead of 7. Okay. If you, still, if you still have the same loan starting year three, it is whatever the rate is in this example of 7%. So you're back on your regular payments. Am I hearing that this is kind of like, so this buy down to me sounds like now you've got two years to refinance back to the lower rate that we hope that we get within those two years. Yes. Yeah, that is, that is 100% correct. Okay. Here's, the, here's the caveat that a lot of people don't know or don't understand. And I would on a, here's the biggest difference between this temporary buy down and the full regular buy down. So these last 10 years when rates kept dropping, 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 someone, and I haven't recommended anyone buy their rate down because you know, one rate you're already at three, three and a quarter. So how much more do you want to buy it down? And, but you know, you're paying these points and then three months later, rates were a quarter point cheaper and you could have gotten it for free. So that's the first thing. When you pay those points on a permanent buy down, that's the end. Um, that, that money is gone, whether you refinance next month or 10 years or never refinance, that money is spent. On this temporary buy down, let's say you do a two to one buy down. So the seller, not you, the seller has paid these this prepaid interest let's say which is my opinion my my thinking somewhere in the next eight to ten months rates have come down pretty significantly guess what all that money that's prepaid for the interest buy down that gets applied to your principal balance it doesn't just oh, go okay. away and that's what most people including people in my profession don't understand or don't know so it's not just money spent and wasted if you if that's bought down that money gets applied to your principal balance on a temporary buy down so on this temporary buy down, there seems to be a lot of benefits for the buyer. Mm -hmm. And then I guess I'm going to jump in and highlight some of the benefits for the seller. Sure. So, you know, obviously I do a lot of listings. I work with buyers and I work with sellers. So my question to myself would be like, why would a seller want to pay these discount points? Did I say right. that right? Yes, ma'am. All right. And to answer my own question, here's why. Because right now, sellers are faced with the price reductions anyway, mm -hmm. because the new interest rates have held back buyers from jumping as they were before right. on brand new listings that hit the market as fast as they were before. So therefore, a buy down to, to, to contribute that to a buyer would make a listing more attractive, I would think. 
It's, it's an incentive that would make it, I would think, sell quicker. Yep. And if I'm not mistaken, it would probably sell for more money because you're not going to be faced with those um, price reductions. You're right. And your neighbors are going to like you better in, as well because your comps aren't being driven down. You're keeping your sales, your list price high. So the comparable to the neighborhood. Right? Your neighbors will like you for keep, yeah. <laughs> holding those values steady. Right. And I've heard this time after time, especially here in the last couple months, are the prices going down? I mean, not substantially. I think there's price reductions, but I think it's mm -hmm. a natural market correction. So, um, you know, nobody wants to see prices in their neighborhood just go down. go down. And exactly. I just don't think that we're there yet. It'll be interesting to see what happens over the next couple months. But right now, mm -hmm. I think to sweeten the pot, the buy down is a great idea for buyers and sellers. I, I do too. And I, and I do think we have, we'll see a little bit next month on inflation numbers, but I think come January, and I won't, again, I won't get too detailed, the numbers where everything's lining up. Starting January, you're going to see, in my opinion, a big reduction in the inflation rate. Yeah. Mortgage rates will follow below, below that. So absolutely, we might yeah. even start seeing some changes after the election. I mean, people do use the election as a, a pivoting point. No, I agree. Um, I'm, I'm just talking surely the numbers, the way the core inflation, the CPI is reported. So November third or tenth, when it comes out, it's going to replace last September's inflation numbers, which is pretty oh, okay. High. Then December, we're replacing last November which is also pretty high. And the biggest thing, um, and again, it's the way they factor housing in, the rentals and mortgages, they're like a six month delay. So now to your point, you know, prices have started evening out a little bit, not, not crashing, but they've come down. Mm -hmm. Rent prices are falling a little bit. So that's not going to be added in to the numbers for about another three months. So about right. January when the readings come out, you're in my opinion, you're going to see a huge thing. The, the caveat being what happens to oil prices because oil drives to inflation with everything else, the truck deliveries and everything else. But, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think we should chat again uh, in a couple more weeks and just keep everybody up to speed on what rates are doing in the housing market. So we'll plug it on the calendar and I'll see you again soon. Absolutely. Have a great weekend. Have a great weekend. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. Awesome.